Greetings everybody, so we're going to be taking a look at question 4 of the 2021 Methods Exam 2 now. I um, already did a video on question 3 so you can check that one out um, somewhere on my channel. Um, so yeah, question 4 now, this is a probability question and we can actually use some CAS programs for this one uh, which is really quite nice. So just quickly typed out um, the question um, and yeah, let's just jump straight into it. So we have a teacher, coaches, table tennis team. Um, there's adjustable ball machine that they use to help players practice, okay. Um, speed, measured in meters per second of the balls, normally distributed random variable W. So, um, this W, it's normally distributed, it tells us the speed. So, we want to find the probability that W is greater than or equal to 11. So, this is finding probabilities on a normal distribution. Let's go to methods, probability, and then normal, and we're going to go... Um, one because it is bounded below and the mean is a uh, 10 standard deviation is 0 0.8 and the a value is 11 so it's 0 0.105 oh it's three decimal places so 0.10 not 105 106 find the value of k um, which 80 percent of the ball speeds are under so if you take a look at the normal distribution Look something like that. And we want to find the value of k. Let's say that's over here. That's k. Such that below this value of k is 80% of the distribution. So this is exactly inverse normal. So let's go to method, probability, and normal inverse. Okay. Let's press enter. Given probability is 0 0.8. And we want that probability to be below certain values. So that's option 1. The mean is 10, the deviation, and A is 10.67. Uh, one decimal place, so this is 10.7. Yeah, so that's K. The teeth adjusts the height setting for the ball machine. The machine now shoots balls high above the table tennis. Unfortunately, with the new height, 8% of the balls do not land on the table. Um, so we have some kind of probability of success, even though that doesn't really look like a success, but we'll define the success as being ball does not land on table. Um, P hat is the random variable representing the sample proportion um, of balls that do not land on the table in random sam samples of 25 balls. So we can assume this is a large population uh, because this ball machine would just be constantly firing balls, so it's not really a fixed amount or anything. Um, okay. So, we want to find the mean and standard deviation of p hat. Well, the mean, expected value of p hat, is just going to be 0 0.08. Because this is p. Um, the standard deviation of p hat, well, there's that formula, square root of p, 1 minus p over n. And if you evaluate this, let's do that on the curve, so we have the square root of a p which is 0 0.08 times 0 0.92 which is 1 minus p over n which is 25 at 0 0.54 and so on um, you can actually use this i'll actually show you guys the program that does all this in one step for you um, it is called go to method stats and you go to p binomial info um, if you run the program and a sample size is 25 and the probability of success is 0 0.08, um, we don't need all these probability values. Um, if we go up, as you can see, expected value is 0 0.08 and standard deviation is 0 0.054, which is basically what we got above. This is, yeah, it doesn't say decimal places, so I'm not too sure if you should put this in exact or not, but. I'm sure they'll accept decimal places. Okay, use the binomial distribution to find the probability that p hat's greater than 0 0.1. Um, well, let's convert this to binomial. Um, so we're going to let x be binomially distributed. The number of trials is 25, the sample size, um, and the probability of success is, well, this 8%. So that's 0 0.08. Uh, and we want to find the probability the x, if we convert from p to x, then we multiply everything by the number of trials. So this is 0 0.1 times 25. 
but this is the exact same thing as the probability of x greater than 2.5 but since x is discrete we're actually starting from 3 and counting all the way up um, and we have to stop at 25 because there's only 25 trials so 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 25 um, so yeah let's use some more programs so we're going to go to methods probability well, num cdf and number of trials is 25 0 0.08 3 25 0 0.323 how many decimal places three decimal places so this is 0 0.323 okay teacher can also adjust the spin setting on the ball machine the spin measured in revolution per second is a continuous random variable Here's the probability density function. Let's go ahead and define that. So we're going to define um, our f of x to be a piecewise function. Let's get the piecewise template from this button. And we're going to go to, where's the piecewise? Here. Now, even though there's three kind of um, pieces to this function, we're actually going to go for two because the zero is kind of like outside of the main domain, which is from zero to 50, as you can see. Um, so we can just assume it zeros everywhere else. Um, so if we do any integrals down here, then we can just integrate from 0 to 50. Um, okay, so we're going to have x over 500 and 50 minus x over 750. And this is 20 less than or equal to x less than 50. And above it's 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 20. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's f of x. Finds the maximum possible spin. Well, what is the spin? The spin is represented by x. And if you take a look at its distribution, x can be at most, well, it can be really anything, but for that probability to exist, it can be at most 50, because anything above 50, well, um, the probability is zero, so it can't really happen. So, yeah, it's going to be 50. Find the median spin. Well, to find the median, let's use another program. Um, this one's I actually put on to probability 2, but that's because of the new updates. So if you have the updated version, then I think continuous info is in here. So you can just use the usual probability folder. So continuous info, and we're going to plug in our f of x, comma. Now, what's the domain of the parts that's not 0? It's from 0 to 20. No, 0 to 50 actually. Okay, and we can get the median, which is um, 22.6, correct, one decimal place. Since it's two marks, if you want to um, start working out, then you can, uh, for instance, let the integral from 0 up to some value b of f of x dx to be equal to a half, and then solve for b on the cas or something like that, and you should be able to get 22.6. Um, find the standard deviation of the spin. Uh, well, here's the standard deviation, just giving us, uh, given to us for free. So this is 10 points, uh, one decimal place, so this is 10.3. Uh, the teacher adjusts the spin setting, so the median spin becomes 30, um, instead of the 22.6 that we already had. Um, this will transform the original probability density function to a new probability density function, g, where g, it looks like it's just some kind of dilation of f. And we want to find the values of a and b for which the new median spin is 30. Okay. Now, it is always useful to, if you're transforming functions like this and you're asked to find values of a and b, um, it's always nice to know what roughly what your function f looks like, just so um, you can make sure you answer uh, in um, the correct context and so on. Um, okay, so let's try to graph this. So it's going from 0 to 50. So let's say this is 0, this is 50, so 20 would be somewhere here. Okay, so if you look at the first part, this is some linear function. So it starts at 0, it goes up to 20, and it actually goes back down to 50 because if you plug 50 into the second part, it's actually 0. So we're going to get and horizontal intercept at 50. So this is what the probability density function looks like. And yeah, so far we know the median is 22. Let's say that's somewhere around here. Now, we want to transform this. What is this transformation doing? We have x divided by b 
inside of the function. What does that mean? It means it's a dilation by a factor of b. So if you divide by something in the function, that's a dilation from the y-axis. So we're kind of dilating this whole guy away from the y-axis or from the y-axis, so you could swish it in or away or so on. Now, that's going to produce something that looks like this, maybe. The problem with doing that is you're going to change the area. The area of a probability density function is always 1. So to compensate for that, that's the reason why they have this a, it's so the area can remain the same at 1. So if you stretch it out, um, the a, what that's going to do, it's going to press down on your whole graph so that the area is a constant value of 1. So that's why the a is there. Now, notice what makes sense over here. It only makes sense to dilate away from the y-axis in this direction. Oh, what's going on? Yeah, just this direction. Um, because we want the median to be 30. The median is currently 22.6. So the only way to get the median to move up to 30 is you, if you stretch everything towards the right. Okay. So that's the intuition over here. So now we want to find the values of a and b um, such that this happens. So how do we do that? Well, there's two unknowns, so we better need um, two equations to solve simultaneously. So the first equation, it could be that, for example, the area under the curve or the area under the graph is 1. What does that look like? It looks like the integral of g of x dx. Um, now, I'm not too sure what the terminals would be yet, but I know the integral under the graph of g of x must be equal to 1. Now, we have to figure out the terminals as well. In g of x, it's always going to kind of stay fixed at 0, because no matter how much it dilates, 0 is going to remain fixed. So we're going to integrate from 0. Now, where do we end our integration? What's the upper bound? Well, if you take a look at the graph of f, which is the red graph, notice that we end our integration at 50. 50 is kind of like the, the upper bound. But with the graph of g of x, what we're actually doing is we're applying a dilation factor of b away from the y-axis, which means the corresponding spot where the function g ends, or the upper bound rather, is actually 50 times b. So originally it was 50 for a graph of f of x, but because of that dilation factor, we're going to multiply by b. So this is a requirement. We require that the integral from 0 to 50 of g is 1. What else do we need? We also need that the median is 30. What would that look like? Well, we know that the integral from 0 to 30 of g of x dx must be equal to a half. Why does that make sense? Well, the yellow graph is g of x. Here's 30. Oh, I didn't really draw this properly. Oh, that's actually not too bad. So here's 30. We want this to be the new median. So everything below here, that area must be a half. That's the definition of the median. So we can do this. So we're going to solve these two equations simultaneously on the curves for a and b. Now you might only see b's here, for example there's a b there and you don't see the a's anywhere, but a is actually hidden in the definition of g. Um, so what we can do on our case is we can define a g of x to be equal to a times f of x over b. Okay, and now we can solve these two guys simultaneously. So let's go ahead and solve. What are we going to solve? We're going to solve um, simultaneous equation, so that's this template. Um, okay, so we have the integral, so shift plus the integral from 0 up to 50 times b of g of x dx, and that's going to be equal to 1. And we also got the integral from 0 up to 30 of g of x dx, that's going to equal to a half. What are we solving this for? We're solving this for a and b simultaneously. Um, and yeah, when I tried doing this on the CAS previously, it actually froze for a little bit. Uh, so it is taking a while. 
um, which is a bit unfortunate because if the computer, my actual computer is slow in doing this, then it must have taken a very, very long time if students use this method in the exam on their CAS calculators. Um, so yeah, I did have someone say that the CAS froze or something like that, or several people, um, but yeah. So what do we get? We get that A is equal to 0 0.75, and B is equal to 1.32, and that's the answers. So this does make sense because look at the B value. B is 1.32. What does 1.32 mean in the context of this question? It means that we're stretching away from the y-axis because this B value is greater than 1. Um, if it was less than 1, it wouldn't really make sense because we're moving the me median closer. We want the median to move further, so that's why it makes sense for B to be greater than 1. But um, yeah, that's pretty much this question. It's a nice question. Um, this question over here was interesting though. Um, yeah, most of these questions you could actually do quite uh, quickly using the programs. Um, so that's nice. Um, yeah, I wish this was on my exam last year, but um, yeah. So if you have any questions, um, comment down below. I'll probably upload more of these videos um, if Worms Math Academy doesn't upload today. Um, but yeah, that's all for today. Thanks for watching.